Hi, I'm Taz Monopoly, cosmetic chemist and trainee here at the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I'm gonna to show you how surfactants are different. Now, firstly, what is a surfactant? A surfactant is a surface active ingredient that is used to create your cleansing products like shampoos, body washes, and facial cleansers. Now, there are four different types of surfactants. There's anionic, which is negatively charged, cationic, which is positively charged, non-ionic, which carries no charge, and also amphoteric, which carries either, depending on the pH of the aqueous environment. Now, what are these different types of surfactants and what are they used for? So anionic surfactants are used to clean the skin or the hair, and they are also used to create foam in your products. These can be used in body washes, shampoos, or facial cleansers. Your amphoterics are also used in the same types of products as your anionic surfactants, but they're used to improve mildness and also to boost foam. Your cationic surfactants are used in your conditioning products. They are used to condition the hair. And your non-ionic surfactants are also added into other cleansing products to improve mildness. But depending on what they are, they can be used to solubilize any oils into the water phase. And also if they're a super fatting agent, they're used to improve the skin feel after wash off. Now, let me show you a few examples of the many different types of surfactants and their forms. So first thing I'm gonna show you a few different types of anionic surfactants. So these are what do the cleansing in cleansing products. So firstly, I've got the Hostapon SCIC from Clarion. So as you can see here, this is in a wax form and this is an isothionate. So this would need gentle heating. This is really good for shampoos, body washes, and also cleansers. Next, I have the same material, but this is the SCI 85P because it is a isothionate in that the powder form. Next, I have the Plant Upon SF. This is actually a blend of surfactants. So this has anionic, amphoteric, and non-ionic in it. And as you can see here, this is quite a bit of a thick liquid. And this is a very mild blend of surfactants. So perfect for shampoos, uh, facial products, cleansing products for children, uh, or anyone's sensitive skin. Next, I have the Eversoft ULS 30S. Now, this is a naturally derived surfactant. So this is sodium lauryl glutamate, and this is perfect for obviously your natural or naturally derived products. Perfect for shampoos, cleansers, and also body washes. And this is quite a clear liquid. Next, I have some sodium laurel sarcosinate. This is also a naturally derived anionic surfactant, so perfect for your cleansing products. This here is the Genogen CAB, which is your cocoa metapropyl betaine. So this is a amphoteric surfactant. This is gonna boost mildness and also foam in your cleansing products. Now next I have a couple of non-ionic surfactants here. So this next one here is the PEG7 Glycerol Cocoate. This is actually a super fatting agent and it's non-ionic. So this is what improves the skin feel after wash off. The next non-ionic surfactant I have here is some polysorbate 20. And this is used as a solubilizer. So this is gonna help easily disperse some oily materials in a water-based product. And lastly, I have some behentrimonium chloride. This is a cationic surfactant. So this is what is used in conditioners to give that nice, beautiful conditioning feeling to hair. So as you can see, there's many different types of surfactants from natural, naturally derived to synthetic, and they also come in a various amount of form. So waxy to powder to thick liquids, runny liquids, and also waxy beads. Now in your cleansing products for best results and stability, we highly recommend using a combination of anionic, amphoteric and non-ionic surfactants. And for your conditioner products, we also recommend using obviously your cationic surfactant, but also pairing it with a non-ionic surfactant to improve mildness and stability. Now, a lot of consumers are under the impression that the more amount of foam you have in a product, the better the cleansing power, but this is actually false. You can still have little amounts of foam that have really good cleansing performance. Now, surfactants are very different to your traditional soaps. They're in fact a lot milder than what is used in your traditional soap bars or liquids. 
Sometimes you won't always get great performance from just using naturally derived surfactants. So sometimes we do recommend using a blend of naturally derived with synthetic to get best performance and results. Now, if you'd like to learn more information about surfactants, how to use them in your formulas, inputs and incompatibilities, please look at enrolling into our cosmetic ingredients workshop series. Or for more professional study, please look at enrolling into our advanced certificate in cosmetic science or our diploma in personal care formulation. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up, leave any questions in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to receive notification on all our videos. Happy formulating.